Welcome back to the wormhole and today I thought I've got an itch. I need to breed some bettas. So today I thought I'd go through all of my supplies that I need and we'll go from there. All right, so the first supply that we are going to need and I wanna talk about is your tank. You can use a lot of different tanks to pull this off. You don't have to actually use an aquarium. I have a lot of five gallon tanks sitting around. This is one that I've used before and in my tree op series. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll leave the first link up above and we'll go from there. See, uh, just a five gallon tank, any waterproof container. I've seen people do this in Tupperwares and all sorts of interesting things. So check out the what you got around the house before you go hunting for something else. We are going to make this side over here is going to be our hiding side for our females. And we're going to try and hook up this side for where all the egg action happens. Oh, I'm getting excited. Let's go check out the rest of it. All right, so goodies to pull this off. What are we gonna need? I do have a filter for a little bit later on once we've got this set up. I have Indian almond leaves, of course, for helping the betta out, especially with egg laying and the, the nest building. I do have some containers that I've used before. I've been very successful with this one, but also you can use bubble wrap and a lot of other tools for that. I started gathering up some things I can use for some hides in the corner. I am going to get the tank well set up and established. I've got lots of bugs and duckweed I can add to it as well for some first food for the betta fry. I do have some almond leaves as well. Of course, some salt <laughs> to go with our new brine shrimp eggs that I've got here. And I do have a hatchable container that I like to use. I am going to test out a run of these eggs before I actually commit my bettas together just to make sure that it does work. I don't like to have any surprises once the babies are on the way. That is just not any fun whatsoever. My favorite supply that I have picked up over the years is this little container here. It doesn't look like much. I do need to clean it off, but it is what I like to put the female betta in. When you let her loose, all you have to do is slide this up, and if you need to catch her in a hurry, it also works quite well. For a little bit later on, we have got our air pump, and of course they lid to our tanks. Bettas, as they are developing, especially when they start to breathe, they're going to need a good cover on their tank. So having a lid, this one does have a little light. It's awfully dirty. I still need to clean that off. We will be doing that shortly. Some good luck charms from my hubby, my frog here. And I think, oops, we better make sure we include into this some methanol blue just in case things go wrong you have some way to try and hatch the eggs I have had to use this to hatch beta eggs and some other things out in the past so having this out is always a good idea as well now we just need <laughs> the bettas so this is my lovely male here that I am going to <laughs> give a go he is one of my babies, one of my short fins. He has some Dumbo in it, but I don't know if we're gonna see any of that in the babies, but I'm willing to give it a go. His blue is just gorgeous. I love the dotting that he has on some of his fins and his tail. Love his attitude. He's very, very springy. I think he's going to make an awesome dad. I'm just trying to make sure that he's getting a lot of exercise making sure he is in shape for what is to come. So we are using a bit of a mirror. Not that I always need to do it. Sometimes just walking out to the tank is enough to get him to flare at me and <laughs> have a good bit of exercise. So that is the start of my conditioning for my male. They are also getting fed twice a day, some really good food. And we will go check out the female. She's 
Penelope, her previous trips really wasn't good, though she has managed to claw herself on the top of the hay. You can see those couple of white dots, and she does have a little bit of a skimp on her head, but she is the right size and in good health for this nail, so we'll see how it goes. Hit the subscribe button and follow along.